watching Beyond Market. Welcome, I'm Esther Awuni. On today's show, the special advisor to Nigeria's president on the ease of doing business joins me to discuss the progress of Nigeria's business reforms. You can join today's conversation with the hashtag Beyond Market. You can also send your thoughts and your comments to my Twitter handle too. It's at Esther O. Awuni. And Nigeria has moved up 15 places in the World Bank's 2020 Doing Business Index with a score of 56.8 points Nigeria now ranks 131 out of 190 countries, and for the second time in three years, Africa's largest economy makes a cut as one of the top 10 most improved economies in the world. Jumake Oduwale, special advisor to Nigeria's president on ease of doing business, joins me to discuss the progress of Nigeria's business reform so far. I must say what, congratulations. Thank I you. know, I mean, you and I have had several conversations. Mm -hmm. We've been, you know, through this step-by-step, -step, uh, the just a process and seeing these reforms actually come into life, you know, has been quite an interesting one. But let's just quickly start with uh, this latest one, 15 steps up, and uh, you did conduct reforms impacting six indicators from starting the business, dealing with construction permits, getting electricity. Just talk us through, I mean, starting the business, for instance. Uh, one thing, and I did say I was going to ask you this question, what is also being highlighted here is two major cities, mm -hmm. Kanu and Lagos, where these reforms are being highlighted. I'm just wondering, from a broad-based reform perspective, is it fair to say that it's actually broad, even though it's just two states that have been mentioned? Well, um, thank you for the question, and thank you for having me, as always, Esther. The World Bank survey takes really the top commercial capital. So most countries in the world, it's just the one commercial capital. The okay. UK is just London. Okay. Nigeria has two cities exactly for that question for a bit more depth because okay. we had a population of over 100 million as at 2023. So just a handful of cities. But I would say that Nigeria is one of only eight 18, con 18 countries in the world that has a subnational ease of doing business ranking, which we've discussed before. So even though this one may not, you know, uh, traverse the length and breadth of the economy gives a snapshot of what Nigeria's thriving commercial capitals have to offer. Okay, now for those who are curious how Nigeria was able to move up 13, 15 uh, steps this time <laughs> around, starting with the business, of course we all know what some of those bottlenecks were. So what were those major changes from that first uh, indicator? So, you know, I'll be honest with you, it's been a journey. So we've been on this journey three years. A number of the reforms that were recognized this year had been done two years ago. Okay. So what it is is that private sector needed to validate the reforms, so a bit of a lag. So for instance, we had done uh, registration of business names for 24 hours. We had, we had done a number of things, registration for two hours. But when private sector doesn't tell the World Bank that they're feeling it, they're using it, it's in practice, majority are using it, then we don't get the point. Okay. So this is kind of a back-end dividend. Last year, you know, we kind of plateaued because we didn't get the validation, but the work had been done. So we spent a lot of time communicating and making sure that the reforms were actually being implemented in practice and felt. And that's where you see the validation coming through for us. Well, apart from that, do you also do you have some kind of engagement also with the private sector, or how often? I suppose oh, you, yes. oh, you must, uh, oh, anyways. Yes. So, oh, I mean, yes. how often yes, did that yes, happen? Yes. We meet with the private sector around the country okay. in quarters. Right now, we're on a subnational tour. We had a kickoff event in Lagos two weeks ago. So, we regularly engage in uh, stakeholder forums. I must have been in Kano about four times this year. Okay. Um, Lagos, we were here pretty often as well. We also go around the rest of the country because we don't uh, segregate. Yes, we're working on rankings, but more importantly, we're working on making sure that the impact of our reforms are being felt. And that can only happen when private sector know about the reforms. I also do accept quite a few invitations from organized private sector and from other groups. So I get to speak and my team also, members also get to speak on the reforms. We engage with uh, Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, all sorts of organizations um, invite us and we get to share the reforms. We're very active on social media. Uh, we're particularly targeting certain demographics, uh, particularly the younger demographic, because you know that we, have, we don't have enough jobs. So we want to make sure that that entrepreneurial spirit is able to thrive 
And when people are trying to sort themselves out that way, we're right there for them. So we're really the champion for small and medium-sized enterprises. So we do a lot targeted at making sure that they know what's going on. Well, so obviously these engagements allow you to know the exact pressure points for yes. the for the private sector. Yes. So you go back yes. with, um, yes. with that. Yes. Okay, but in terms of, I mean, uh, yes, I mean, it's yielded results now, but for the starting business, just to spend one or two minutes on this, what would you say were the biggest stumbling blocks, if there were, in terms of it getting or achieving this success now? Yeah, you know that World Bank looks at the cost, looks at the time and transparency. So we had reduced, uh, we had made sure that you don't need a lawyer to register your business, and that had been put at a cost of about 60,000 Naira. And for the last two years, we've made sure that you can do a self-application. And now we have majority of en uh, entrepreneurs going on the portal themselves because we closed every manual avenue and we made it automated. So even if you're using a lawyer, they're also going online, but you yourself can go online. And so that cost was now removed for us. And that was a big one. So it's 60,000 naira cheaper in court cheaper. to register a business in Nigeria because you, you don't, it's optional to pay that. So. Okay, yeah. let's quickly move on to dealing with construction permits. And this mm -hmm. was also a challenging one. Yeah. And I, from what I see in the report, removing the infrastructure development charge was a yes. game changer for yes. this. Yes. Talk to us about that. Yes, uh, Lagos State took a very bold uh, step. We, we had discussions and we did field surveys and we persuaded uh, the government that this charge could be removed for this demographic. Uh, smaller businesses, smaller sized um, um, structures don't need to pay that level of, you know, it was quite, uh, the, the cost was quite uh, large, significant. And so they were persuaded and they removed the charge two years ago. Oh, I'm just wondering because, yeah. I mean, we're at a time yeah. where not just the federal government, but yeah. the subnationals are looking yeah, for exactly. additional revenue. So that's why, I mean, kudos to the Lagos State Government. They took that bold step two years ago, but mm. a lot of people didn't know, hadn't yet validated the fact that that charge was no longer there. That lag has disappeared now with a lot of communication and with us being able to prove that people are no longer paying that charge, then we got the validation. But what about people in other states who are saying, hey, well, that's Lagos State. I, I mean, I do business here too. When is, this, when is my state going to do this? So, you know, we work with the National Economic Council and um, like right now we're heading to Anambra, Imo, Jigawa, Borno, Delta, Ikiti. The whole idea is to make sure that it's not a Lagos Cano intervention. Uh, we work with the National Economic Forum to replicate the model across the country because most businesses do uh, transact their, their business across state lines anyway. Either you're sourcing for materials or you're selling somewhere else. So it's very important for the intervention and for the economy. That's a holistic approach. So that's our strategy. And so it's a lot of peer learning. Of course, we're a federation and the states have exactly what uh, they have, um, you know, what their own purview is and is their prerogative. But when you see that your peers are attracting investment, then you also want to make sure that your business environment is more competitive. So it's a learning and it's also sort of healthy competition between states. Mm. But, but, but do you get concerned sometimes just thinking about the fact that, you know, at the end of the day, some states may not want to be persuaded as, as it were, and that might uh, through, take away some of the momentum. I mean, overall, like you said, mm -hmm. the World Bank looks at the two biggest cities, mm -hmm. so the mm -hmm. rankings keep, keep going yeah. up. But for, you know, impact on the ground for the business owners themselves, do you... Are you concerned sometimes that that may drag you back, progress back for Pebec, if many of the states don't come on board? Well, I must say I'm extremely proud of the governors because no state has come to say I'm not interested. It was a unanimous decision, and I, I brief them regularly. They're very enthusiastic and positive. Every state wants IGR, so they want that investment, both domestic investors and foreign investors. So they're quite bullish about it. Almost every governor has an ease of doing business reform champion, a special advisor or a commissioner that has this portfolio. So I have a lot of colleagues at the state level and we interact regularly. States are also seeing that some of their peers are able to poach investment from them in regions. So the competition is really on. And so they're taking it quite seriously, I must say. Okay, let's move on to the third indicator, elect, uh, is it getting electricity? Yes. yes. Uh, that's also a tricky one. <laughs> uh, and I'm curious to know, I mean, how, yeah. this, you know, how this went. So again, basically, we're reducing the time it takes to connect to the grid. We're working with the discos, uh, Lagos uh, and Kano, to make sure that the number of steps. So they had, we started, where we started from was 
quite a few steps, about nine steps in some cases, and trying to reduce them, coming down to five steps, and convincing private sector. So it's one thing to have the regulator and the DISCO agree that these are the number of steps, but in practice you have the electrician, you have the certified electricians, you have the, the actual practice, and habits, old habits die hard. So trying to convince people that government has actually shifted position and that things are easier, you wouldn't believe it. Sometimes, I mean, even just going back to starting a business, trying to let people know that you don't need that stamp anymore, that seal, in practice, those things just take a long time to go away. And it's, it's a worldwide phenomenon. But until private sector have adhered and validate, you don't get the point. I remember yeah. we also talked about, because part of your job, part of this mandate is also changing mindsets. Yeah. I remember we've talked several yeah. times about this too. Uh, would you say that is also, is that also improving? <laughs> I mean, just the yes. stamps and you know, yes. old yes. ways and all of that. I think that... There was a huge distrust. There was a trust deficit from 2016. And now the conversation is a lot more nuanced. Private sector are beginning to, of course, the reward for hard work is more hard work. So the more you have a reform, the more is expected of you. And that is the way it should be because it's a journey. But um, sometimes trying to get private sector to know that, you know, just test it out. They're used to their old ways. So it takes a lot of cajoling, a lot of responsiveness, not being defensive, persuading. Sometimes somebody just gets frustrated with the process and sends out a tweet, this portal isn't working, or this, you know, this is a 419, this is a fake. Instead of getting upset or defensive, the agencies engage with them, respond to them, take them through, whether it's a visa on arrival, whether it's CAC registration, whatever process it is, yeah because it's changed, so you need to, the, the biggest thing about change is information and transparency, and it takes some time. But we're happy that we're getting in a, in a stride. Nigerians do know that the government is interested in making the business climate more conducive. We need to be competitive. We need to have uh, better production. And so it's a whole slew of challenges, but with a systemic approach, we know that we're denting the Hmm. You know, you and I also talked about, because for the mindset, you know, we just talked about the private sector, but it was a bit of a, a big challenge also with your own side of things as a public sector yes. in terms of, okay, yes. you are now yes. having to deal yes. differently with the private yes. sector and with this yes. new mantra, this new mindset, you have to stay with on message. Everyone yes. has to stay on message. We all have to. That's why we have the executive order one. We released our second year, our second annual report on Tuesday. It's important that public and civil servants are measured by standard operational procedures, uh, timelines, transparency, who's in charge, who's responsible, what is the timeline, um, consequence management, encouragement. Uh, so those are the tools with the executive order. We have the PEBEC award sometimes. So when things are working, I urge people to please mention it. It's a journey. And then trickling down, we have a lot of cooperation from the higher levels. But for the, for the uh, message trickling down, it's also quite tricky. I mean, I've, I've spoken to officers, um, maybe at the airport, for instance. I said, you know, this form is no longer the case. Perek has gotten there telling me the memo hasn't come from Abuja. I don't know about that. So I'm like, you know, I'm back to their senior colleagues that this message needs to come down. We also need a lot of training. There's some assistance that our public and civil officer service officers can also benefit from and we all have to encourage each other to make this work well let's just take a short break at this point okay. we'll come back and pick up from where <laughs> we left off i've been speaking to jimakia oduwale she's a special advisor to nigeria's president on the ease of doing business if you're just joining us jimakia oduwale special advisor to nigeria's president on ease of doing business is my guest today and we are discussing nigeria's business reforms thank you jimakia for your time so far let's quickly move this along let's start with it let's continue with the fourth registering property that's also a tough one yeah. uh, but just help bring us up to speed on the progress has been made with this one registering property you know it's also within the state purview so we work with our colleagues in Lagos and Kano State to make sure that the processes are more conducive so Kano State for instance started using professional consultants to make the process smoother for the for the public and, and quicker so they did some outsourcing just to make it easier and faster um, also more cost efficient, 
um, Lagos State has continued to have, they have a reform uh, plan in place. They've continued to have that, even just the customer facing. Um, last year, they, they, you know, we did just uh, the conduciveness. It's, a, it's, it's by repeating what has been done until the public get it and know that these are in place. Um, I think sometimes there's skepticism and people are used to doing things the way they do things. But I would want to urge the public to test these reforms, uh, test the online payments, test the use of emails, test all the good reforms that are out mm. there for you. And while all of this is happening, your feedback mechanism, is that yeah. still strong? As I remember the last time we spoke, you did talk about how active that it was. It is. We have at the federal level the report.gov.ng. Lagos State has the Citizens Gate. Uh, which is a report uh, mechanism. At the stakeholder engagement, the kickoffs of national event, the governor also said he wants them to have a report gov for LASG.ng. Uh, so we're going to partner with them on that. The idea is to make sure that the feedback, that we're, we're basically responsive, a responsive government. Um, the reforms have to f go to where the shoe is pinching. And if we get feedback that any reform at all, we've had situations in the past, not now, where a reform was done, um, and the private sector are like, whoa, this form is even more complicated. Like this automated form is even more complicated than the manual one page I had. Let me just use my paper. So we had to engage. That was a tax reform, I believe, about three years ago. We had to sit the IT people with the users, with the oh, tax okay. uh, practitioners, and they adjusted it. And then since then, it was, it was fine. So the idea is to be a listening government, to be a responsive government, and to continue taking the feedback and making sure that one after the other, we deal with each challenge. So there's a lot left. There's definitely a lot left. This is a good day for Nigeria. It's a good day. Uh, one of only two African countries to make the top 10 list. We've made it uh, twice in three years. So we're working. Um, and I think that the, the partnership is working. Private sector is becoming more open. They're reporting more. They're engaging more. We had um, over 400 people at the last event we had. So there's so, a growing belief yes, in the process. Yes, yes. But yes. in terms of capacity in your office, I mean, as more people engage and are believing that, that this is working, I'm thinking, like mm -hmm. you said, more hard work down the line yes, for you. So yes. capacity comes into yes. the question here. Capacity definitely does. Well, we've been at it now. This is the fourth year. And our, our strategy for sustainability is really working. We've always worked with the reform champions. Those are the public and civil servants. And even more so this time around to entrench, because we had a number of consultants from firms like KPMG, Deloitte, McKinsey, supporting on some of these reforms. But now we're starting to build some competence within the agencies, uh, within Servicom, and the IT departments are uh, layering homegrown automation. The sustainability plan is to make sure that, like other countries, you might have somebody checking on doing business reforms, but it's internalized in each ministry, department, and agency on an annual basis as part of your strategy. How can we make things simpler? Speaking about making things simpler, for the trading across borders, uh, mm -hmm. that's, I'm not sure how perhaps that one is becoming a bit <laughs> controversial at this point because it's happening at a time when, you know, of course, you've seen the headlines yeah. and uh, with the closure of the border and calling into question the effectiveness of the African continental featured area. I know that for uh, uh, agencies like Customs, I mean, technology is helping them you know, to be more efficient. Mm -hmm. But just speak to that point. Does this, the closure of the border, does that affect anything? What can you tell us? The conversation is nuanced. Um, there's some complexity, but it's not undoable. So the Nigerian uh, business climate, or should I say the Nigerian economy, we're a trading economy and we're a big, attractive market. So because of that, there's been some abuse of our market through our borders, through our ports, and um, it does affect the economy. It affects the local production. When things come in at a cheaper price, those producing locally are challenged. So I've had companies say to me, thank God you've given us some respite from smuggling and from anti-competitive imports. But of course, you have companies that are dealing across the region and have their trucks stuck at the borders. That's also a, a different. So there are different demographics and there are different things that the government is solving for. Needless to say, we have to solve all these challenges. That is why uh, we're government. So you have to take them one by one. Sometimes you prioritize some shock treatments over, but 
you know, whatever the administration decides. What we know is that we're bullish about the AFCFTA. Nigeria is uh, reasonably competitive. I think there are only about four or five, a handful of countries more competitive than us in the entire continent. We've been very, we've been dominating informally. This is an opportunity to formalize it. We are committed to making sure that Nigerian businesses are African champions. Whether it's in services, whether it's in manufacturing, whether it's in agriculture, agribusiness, uh, we're going to be there for the businesses to make sure that what they need for AFCFTA implementation is addressed one after the other. So we're aware of what the challenges are. I will take them on head on. There's no shine away from it because we've signed the agreement. We're there for the long haul. There's a lot of upside that Nigeria can have. But there's a lot of hard work that we have to do to make that happen. Okay, yeah. let's talk quickly of the last uh, one, the number six, enforcing a contract. Mm. Now, what changed here? Uh, the introduction of small claims courts. Okay. Last year, Lagos State introduced a small claims court in April. Cano launched theirs in January of this year. The small claims court decongests the high courts. It's a very liquidated damages of 10 million and below for small uh, enterprises. So they don't have to be stuck. Enforcement of contract is a big one for companies when somebody owes you and you're stuck. So you can self-represent. The okay. rules are simple. So the idea is just have in mind simplicity, removing complexity, lowering cost, and having transparency. Those are the things that the World Bank looks at at really MSME level. And then you have more room for more competitive like skill issues to deal with that that sophisticated more sophisticated level okay yeah now for i mean there was the pebec 60 day national action plan and that went up to four four was launched 4.0 yes, yes, so where, where are we yes. with the national action yeah. plan i mean that's you know our homegrown accelerator okay. we do one every year the first year we did two uh, we finished that, that 4.0 earlier this year it's an accelerator we start the reform cycle november every year and we agree a broad consolidated list of reforms across all the MBAs and the states, everybody involved. And we start tracking it. And then by about late January, February, we go into a 60-day accelerator, like a, a last push. And we measure the reforms and we track it weekly. And then by April, we know where we are. Because there's cutoffs. If you're talking about DB, there's cutoffs. Uh, end of April. So that's what it is. So NAP 5.0 will happen at the beginning of next year, like Q1 next year. Of course, the reform cycles continue in July. Okay. We focus on homegrown things that are not necessarily anything World Bank related because a lot of those come to the fore. So no, with this progress, no, we're now at 131. Does that make you go back to the drawing table to for a change of strategy, or are you going to just stay no, the course because we're it looks like it's working? Just accelerating. Okay. You know, you know, Esther, that we had things on the table that we mm. didn't get to. You know that by 2020, we want to be a sub-100 economy. The Companies and Land Matters Act is poised. There were some last-minute hiccups. We're about to reintroduce that to the National Assembly. Get that signed this quarter. Once we're sort of uh, done with the business of the budget budget cycle, that in itself is a game changer. It hasn't been reviewed in 30 years. It hasn't been yeah. overhauled in 30 years. Once we get that, that's going to be good traction. There are a lot of other things. So it's like a camera plus acceleration. So we're bullish about next year as well, and we intend to be a sub-100 economy. By next year? Yes, 2020. Okay. But what would you say, mm -hmm. I mean, just looking from the journey 2016 up until now, what would you say has been for you, I mean, leading this charge? I, I imagine, mm -hmm. obviously, your team, you're all over, going from one place <laughs> to the other across the country. It's a big country. Mm -hmm. It's a big market. It's a big business uh, environment. What would you say has been the most challenging for you uh, executing this? Consequence management on the oh. public sector side, I think that with more consequence management, we'll have faster traction, more discipline, we'll have faster traction. On the private sector side, I think uh, building the trust, uh, uh, quicker uptake on private sector side, you know, just having some trust and trying these reforms out and um, making use of them because a lot of hard work. Um, so I would say private sector, use the reforms, try them out, commend public sector, the officials need the encouragement. I would say public sector, put your hands to the plow because Nigeria needs you and is relying on you. We need the private sector to make this economy work. 
Juma, I must thank you for your time today. Thank you so much. And of course, all the best with the yeah. uh, rest thank of the you. journey. I've been speaking to Jumakeo Duwale, special advisor to Nigeria's president on the ease of doing business. Well, that's it on Beyond Markets. Thank you so much for being a part of it. Remember, you can watch the show at 5 p.m. West African time daily and have access to all previous episodes of the show on our website. That's cnbcafrica.com. You can also stay engaged with the hashtag Beyond Markets. You can also follow my Twitter handle too. It's at Esther O. Awoni. For myself and the team, it's bye for now.